When we say we believe in God, the Greek word used in the New Testament is pistuo. This word has a meaning quite different from our English word, believe. In Greek, pistuo involves two important concepts that we often miss. The first concept is faithfulness. This means that when you encounter the word faith in the Bible, if the meaning seems unclear, try reading it with the understanding of faithfulness. This change can make difficult passages more comprehensible. For example, many of us have prayed with the expectation that, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. But have you ever wondered why it sometimes feels like those prayers are not answered? Try looking at it this way instead of just believing, in the sense of hoping or wishing. Think of it as praying with faithfulness. A faithful person doesn't ask for things driven by personal desires. They don't pray out of self-interest instead. They deny themselves and pray in a way that aligns with God's will. A faithful person prays not just to receive what they want but to live. According to God's Word, when we pray faithfully, we are not asking for just anything we are asking for. What is aligned with God's plan? And in that context, God is faithful to respond. The second key aspect of pistuo is the idea of proving or demonstrating one's faith through actions. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior and the Lord of your life, this belief must be proven through your actions. Faith is not just a matter of verbally saying, I believe it's something that must be evident in how you live. The church, therefore, should not just be a gathering of people who verbally confess their faith, but should be a community where people live out their faith with faithfulness and obedience to Christ's teachings. Jesus illustrated this in the parable of the Good Samaritan. When a religious scholar asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? He wasn't sincerely seeking to learn. He wanted to justify himself and test Jesus. But Jesus turned the question around by telling the story of a Samaritan who, unlike the religious leaders, acted with true compassion. In the parable, a man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and was attacked by robbers. Both the priest and a Levite saw the man lying there, wounded and helpless, but they passed by without helping him. These were men who, like the religious scholar, were supposed to live by God's laws, yet they failed to act. Then a Samaritan, who was despised by the Jews, for not being of pure blood, came by. He saw the man, was moved with compassion, and didn't just feel pity, he took action. He bandaged the man's wounds, took him to an inn, and even paid for his care. The Samaritan didn't know the man, and there was no expectation of repayment but he cared for him anyway. This is the kind of faith that Jesus calls us to one that is proven by actions, by living out the love and compassion that we profess with our mouths. At the end of the parable, Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The scholar had no choice but to reply, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. This is the heart of Jesus' message. Faith is not just about knowing the right things or making the right confessions. It's about living out that faith through faithful and compassionate actions. Jesus' words are a challenge to us all to move beyond mere belief and to live our faith through our actions, proving our faithfulness by the way we love and serve others. This is what it means to truly believe in the biblical sense.